Welcome to this episode of Heaven Encounters. My guest today is Israel Shalom. He'll tell you why he has that name and changed it to that name. But the reason he is on the show today is because he died multiple times from COVID. And he met both Jesus and angels. The story is just going to inspire and edify you. Israel, it's great to have you with us today. Amen, amen, my brother Randy. Shalom to you, and thank you so much again to be to be with you again. I think we we becoming family right here. <laughs> we we are family. Yeah, As a matter of fact, yeah. when you were in the hospital with COVID, I remember that uh, we were praying for you, and uh, you anyway you flatlined uh, a number of times. I think three or four times. But uh, I'll let you tell a story and begin where you would like to uh, begin. First of all, thank you again. This happened um, November of twenty five, November twenty fifth of twenty twenty one at at my home at in in upstate New York. Right now, I'm here down in Florida, um, uh, sharing my the testimony with different churches. Is um, if an experience that changed my life. Um, I was a person that I did not believe in COVID. That this is not real, and then um, boom, it hit. It hit my family, and we had we were having a Thanksgiving dinner, and, and more than twenty five people at my house. You know, I'm a very clean person. I'm always cleaning the house. You know, making sure everything is okay. And um, right there, um, when everybody left, um, like maybe four days later, I was no, like a week, maybe like seven, yeah, seven days later, I went to see some Christmas Christmas light with my daughters. And when I went to see those Christmas lights, I got a call from the pastor saying I got bad news. The pastor that was there at my home, he said I got bad news. And then he, I told him what happened. And he said I, I I tested positive with COVID and my entire family, and we were there with you. I got like a little bit scared, but at the same time, I was, I, I I was like in this peace, like I didn't took it like too seriously. So right there. I said, not to worry, whatever happens, let it happen. Right now, everybody's okay, nobody is sick. But that same day, I started getting like a sore throat and my daughters. So then um, next day, um, my son-in-law, his family went back to Florida. They were all sick. And then my son-in-law got sick. And then my granddaughter, Evangelina, got sick. And then my daughter, Sierra Lee, and everybody was like a domino. Everybody was getting sick. Everybody was getting sick. And I was like, oh, man. But I was still being, this is not COVID. This is not, this is only a normal flu. This is normal. We in flu season. So then right there, Randy, um, when uh, um, I started getting sick, I had a little slight fever, nothing major, nothing big. So um, I went outside to buy some medicine for the family because I was taking care of everyone. And when I went outside, it was snowing with cold ice. And right there, I, my hair got wet with this cold ice. Randy, next day, I woke up with this horrible fever, uh, almost 104. My bed was so wet. I started getting chills. My, my bones were hurting. I, I, it was, I couldn't smell. I couldn't taste. I was like, Lord, what's happening? And right there, Randy, I'm a man that I know when God is speaking to me. And I know where the enemy also, because the enemy will also will speak to you, you know? And we had to know, who, um, we had to make know the difference of, of the voice of the enemy and the voice of, of, of the Lord. But thank God for the Holy Spirit that I know the voice of the Lord. And I heard this voice telling me, Edgar, I want to, be, I want, I want to talk to you. But I didn't understand. And then when he told me that, I was like, Lord, I'm here, speak to me. I have a holy room upstairs in my room and I started praying. I couldn't even go into my knees. Second day, third day, I, I was taking all this tunnel, all, all this medication over the counter. Nothing, Randy, nothing was working. So when my when when like like on the fifth, on the seventh, like on the sixth day to the seventh day, if if I if I remembered, um if I'm correct, I remember that I was I couldn't even walk the stairs anymore to my room. So I, when I went downstairs to go to the bathroom, I couldn't even make it to the bathroom, Randy. I did it on myself, everything on myself. And then I wanted to go back upstairs and I couldn't even breathe. The, the part, the most horrible part is the breathing, the breathing part. 
I couldn't even breathe. And I heard the voice from the stairs telling me, you better not go up the stairs, stay downstairs because you're not going to be able to walk the stairs. So I told my son-in-law, go get my pillow and my blanket. I'm not going to sleep upstairs. I'm going to sleep here on the couch. And right there, when I was sleeping in the couch, next day again, I thought I was going to feel better. My wife was getting worried. My daughter was getting worried. I was pale. And then when, um, when on, on the next day, I woke up around 7 in the morning and I wanted to go to the bathroom. I can run. When I got up, I couldn't breathe. I was like gasping for air. And when I went straight to the bath, when I was almost getting to the bathroom, I couldn't make it. And I did it again on myself. And I was saying, Lord, what's happening to me? And right there, I felt death. I was like, I'm dying. I, 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 I went back to the couch and I, and I was, I couldn't, I was like gasping for that air. And, and I said, Lord, and, and right there I was saying, I started crying. And I told the Lord, if you're going to take me home, please take care of my daughters, take care of my grandkids. Please, Lord. I couldn't even, my eyes were closing by itself, Randy. And when my eyes started closing by, my, by themselves, right there, my spirit came out from the couch. Hallelujah. And I was standing in my living room. And then right there, I saw these four men with these beautiful crowns and these beautiful garments. And they were going like this to me. I did hear one of them say, come, come to, come with us. And then when I was getting closer to them, the, the, the living room, like, I don't know if the living room disappear. And then I saw this man, his shoulder, and he was telling these four men, to go to him, I saw this portal, like a portal of gold opening, like a round. And then I saw, um, 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 like I could see clouds, I could see something, but I was, I, I couldn't tell exactly what I was seeing, but it was, I know it was, I could feel the peace. And then the first man went in, and then the, and then the second one went in, and then the, he went like this, the third one into the fourth one, and then I was the fifth one when I was, when I started walking. I was dressed in these beautiful garments and I had this beautiful crown in my, in my head and I could even move the crown, Randy, hallelujah. And then when I, I, went, in, when I went in right there, when I went in, this, the man that he, he went like this to me, when I went in, he got in, he, he's standing in, in, in front of me and he went like this with his hand. I, did, I mean, when he went like, I couldn't even, the hand was so big, like covering me. And then I was like, why? And then he went like this with his hand. And then when he went like this, I saw his face. I saw his beauty, his hair. His hair is just like the picture that I, that I saw in one of your programs. It was this beautiful goldish brown hair. Maybe I would dare say gold because the shine in here was powerful. His eye was emerald green. He had this beautiful beard, but also his eye would change a little bit of colors. I don't want... I cannot explain evil. And in my spirit, Randy, I knew, I knew that was Yeshua. Hallelujah, my Messiah. I knew it. And I told him Yeshua. And he smiled. And when he smiled, he went like this to me. And then he said, when he said, you, like his hand, he said, you need to go back. And he went like this on his hand. And I went back to my, my, to my body. And when I went back to my body, I got up. And when I got up, Randy, I couldn't breathe again. I couldn't. I was, I was saying, why? Why I, I didn't go? And then right there, my son-in-law was just getting up to go to work. He saw me in the sofa, in, in the couch. I was all wet. I urinated in my, myself. I was sweating horrible. And he said, Pop, you need to go to the hospital. And I was looking at him. His name is Jay. And I would say, Jay or Yeshua, because I could still see him, Randy. And every time I talk about it, I get like this because I could never forget that beautiful face. I just can't. He is gorgeous. He's beautiful. He's a tall man. He's not like too white. He's like my color, maybe darker, like, like the night. He is from Nazareth. So I guess, you know, I went to Israel and the sun in Nazareth is burning hot. And you see all these men, very tan in color, like brownish. So I guess that's the way Yeshua, Jesus was. And right there, they took me to the hospital, Randy. I did not went to the hospital directly. I went to urgent care. And when I went to urgent care, because I was being stubborn, I said, I don't want to go to the hospital. You know how men are, they hate hospitals. So I said, I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to stay in the hospital. This is only a flu. This is nothing big. 
So they, I went to urgent care. I was waiting there and waiting there. This guy was, was very upset. I've been here for four hours and you guys have to still call me. And I looked at that man, I say, and I looked at my daughter. I said, four hours and I only been here for two. So and then my daughter got up and she went to the front and she told the nurse, my dad it can't breathe. I think you know what's happening with my dad. I don't want to mention because there's a lot of people here. And then she said, there's nothing much we can do. You have to wait at least seven hours per patient. I look at my daughter and I said, sweetheart, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, I cannot wait seven hours, I can't breathe. And I mean, I was, I was, I was like, maybe like, um, I couldn't believe what was happening to me because supposedly if I was a COVID, they were supposed to take me in immediately, but they didn't. And then right then my daughter started calling Albany Medical Center. And when she called Albany Medical Center, um, medical center, uh, uh, Randy, the lady was saying, she was interrupting my daughter, you're wasting your time because Albany is eight hours. This lady was being real rude. And, that, and that's Albany, New York. Yes, Albany, New York. I live um, 30 minutes away from Albany, New York. And then when um, when I was there, I, um, 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 my daughter started calling. So the lady in the phone said, listen, bring your dad over here. We're gonna wait for him. It's a cold night. Nobody's in the hospital. Bring him. Bring him. My daughter grabbed me like this. Dad, come on. We, I'm taking you to. I'm taking you to an Albany Medicine, Medical Center in New York. And she she drew so fast. It was snowing. It was like thick ice. I said, I would say, sweetheart, drive carefully because you know I don't want nothing to happen to you. So right there, we 20 minutes later, we arrived to Albany Medical Center. And right there, Randy, there, there was this security guard. I got out the car. And I couldn't, Randy, it's the most horrible feeling when you can't breathe. It's the most horrible feeling. And when I got there, they, the, the, the security guard said, are you okay, sir? I said, no, I can't breathe. And then he took me in and then they took me to the nurse. Five minutes later, they, 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 they called my name. They took me to the back. They started taking my virals. And when they, right there, the, the girls, she got so scared because my accident was in a 77. You know what, 77? Mm. My accident from 98 to a 77. And then I was like scared because I didn't want to get two. So they, they said, we need, listen, this is COVID. This is COVID. And I had to, I had to I, I alert the hospital. We're going to help you. Don't worry. So they pressed this code and maybe the whole hospital started cold gray, cold gray. And then the doctors went, they came to the, to, the, to, the, to the ER and right there, they stripped me. They took my shirt out. They started putting the heart, monitoring monitor my heart. They couldn't find my heart because my heart was full of water. They started doing x-ray. They did the COVID test. They did a blood exam. They told me if I have anything that I need them to turn. I said, well, according to the doctor, I was diagnosed with diabetes. That's the only thing I know. And right there, they did all these exams. And then two hours later, when there was, the doctor was about to come to the room, I, I saw the bathroom and I wanted to go to the bathroom and I couldn't not even, um, um, even urinate anymore because I was so dehydrated, you know, that urge but nothing comes out. And then right there, I heard the voice of the Lord telling me, Edgar, I want you to stay because I want to talk to you. And I was starting, Lord, why do you want me to stay? Your, your words say that by your stripe we are healed. Your, 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 your Bible said that you took all our infirmity to the cross of Calvary. I'm in the hospital, please. My family needs me. Don't leave me here. Edgar, I want you to stay. I want to talk to you. So then right there, the doctor came in. And when the doctor came in, she told me, you are positive, you have new, new, new pneumonia, you have bronchitis, and you have COVID, that's three in one. Your lungs are collapsing, we cannot find your heart, your heart is under stress, and you could die. And then I said, I don't wanna stay. And then my daughter said, if I take him home, what's gonna happen? You're gonna bring him back in four hours, and he's gonna be in the morgue. And I was like, no, no. So I look at my daughter, I say, and I, and I look at the doctor, I say, I'll stay. So right there, a few hours later, almost six in the morning, they took me upstairs to my room. <coughs> they took me upstairs to my room. They, they put all the stuff that they needed to put on me. And then right there, everybody left. My daughter left back home. And right there, I heard the voice of the Lord again. He, and he told me, Edgar, I want you to rest. And right there, I went to sleep. 
And four hours later, they had to take me to the um, to a CT scan to see if I have blood clots in my lungs. And then right there, they took me, Randy. And when they took me out of the bed, they took me to uh, to the front with all the nurses. The guy that was taking um taking me to downstairs, he forgot um the records of my of my you know the records all my stuff. So he had to run to the room. And I started gasping for air because he forgot to put on the accident into a 21 because my unit was 21. My mother was on a number four when she was, when she died of congestion and heart failure. I was a 21. That's a lot. So right there, I couldn't, I, I couldn't like, I, I couldn't breathe again. And this lady, this beautiful lady from nowhere, she didn't have a mask. And this is the COVID unit, mandatory max, mandatory retirements, mandatory, everything is mandatory. And only one vis visit per patient all day. And then I look at that lady, I remember her, she was like kind of like blonde, dark brown hair, short hair. She got these beautiful blue eyes, maybe a little bit dark blue. And she looked at me and she said, are you okay? And I looked at her, Randy, and I said, no, I can't breathe. And then she said, I remember she, she took the, 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 the tank and she blasted the tank and I started breathing again. And when I started breathing again, Randy, I, 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 she looked at me, she was so close to me. And I was looking at this beautiful lady. For me, she was a doctor. She was a doctor because she had this doctor, uniform doctor. And I know she had a name, but I couldn't see the name because my vision was very blurred. And then I was looking at her and then she, I said, I, thank you. And then she, she touched me and she said, you're going to be okay. And then she went, when, she, when she left and I tried to turn back and she disappeared. I just ignored it thinking that she's only a, a doctor. So they took me downstairs. They did the, the CT scan. And right there when they put me back in the wheelchair, one of the guys that was doing the tests, he told me, I feel so bad for him because it looks like he's not going to make it. I stopped the wheelchair. I told the guy, turn me back around. I want to see this guy. So he turned me back around and I looked at, at this, one of the guys that work at the CT scan unit and I told him nicely because I heard a voice telling me again, be nice and kind to people. Edgar, I want you to be more kind. And I'm trying my best, Randy. And we live in a world where you have to have this kind spirit because um, the love of many have go cold in these last days. And right there, I looked at him. I said, I am going to make it. I told him, I am going to make it and you're going to be part of my testimony. So they took me back upstairs and they put me in, they put me in the bed and they, all the nurses were waiting for me. And I told one of the nurses, her name was Kim. I remember she was the most sweetest nurse I have ever, ever had. And she was also a Christian. And, I, and when she was fixing my, my, the thing from the heart, she told, I was telling her, could you, could you tell me who's the name of the doctor who gave me the oxygen? And then she told me, you don't remember her name? I said, no, I know she was a nice, good looking lady. She had a, a doctor's retirement thing and she didn't have no mask. And I don't know. And then when she said, wait, whoa, 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 give me a second. She didn't have a mask. I said, no, Edgar, this is mandatory here in the unit of COVID. If I come to your room without a mask and all the stuff that I need to use, I will be fired right here immediately. And I was like, no, 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 this can't be. And then she said, how was the lady? I told her again. She was a, a white lady, nice long hair. I know. I thought she was a doctor, no max, no, no, she didn't have nothing. And then she, tell, she told me, do you believe in angels? I said, I do. And then she said, then I, I just answered your question. I said, oh my God. And right there, like a few hours later, um, then my son-in-law came to see me. Then he left. And around 7, 7.47, maybe 8 o'clock in the evening, I heard the voice of a man again calling me, Edgar. And I know everybody calls me Israel. Shalom. Everybody calls me Israel because of my Facebook. But my real name is Edgar, but I don't mind. And everybody calling me Israel because I love Israel. And you can see I wear my keeper. I stand for the Holy Land. And then when he, I, he said, Edgar, I said, who is it? And then I opened my eyes. There was nobody, nobody in the room. So I just went back to sleep. A few seconds later, I heard my mother calling me. Son, are you okay? And I was like, mom? 
So I opened my eyes. I didn't see anything. But then when I looked to my left side, I saw her. Randy, she was beautiful. <laughs> she was young. <laughs> my mother was my everything. And um, her beauty, I mean, she's like 35. <laughs> I don't know how. To, this is so hard to explain because she was 75. And she so this is your way. mother who had, who had passed away mm-hmm. and, and, and went on to heaven. Mm-hmm. That you were seeing now at your uh, at your bedside, yes, or wherever you were at the time, maybe not yes. at your bedside, uh, yes, mm-hmm. but but in heaven, yes, yes. And then right then, when I looked at her, I said, "Mom, I'm going to be today in paradise with you." I remember when she went like this with her mouth, she went mm-hmm, like that, and then she disappeared. So when she disappeared, I went back to sleep. And right there, they called me again, Edgar. And I said, who is it? And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I stood quiet. Right there in front of me, the, the, the wall disappeared. And I could see the nurses taking care of patients and the doctors running everywhere in the COVID unit. But I, that, that whole wall disappeared. And when that wall disappeared, I was standing. In, I was standing like, I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, I was standing in the hospital because it was dark. And when I was standing, he said, Edgar, who are you to dare say that my judgments are not real? And I told him, Lord, because I know it was the Lord. I said, Lord, when I have said something like that, when have I offended you? I would never dare to offend you. And then right there, he took me to the space, to space. And I was floating in the air in space and he was holding me right here to my waist. And I remember having a vision a year ago with that, what I was seeing right there. And then he told me, do you remember this vision? And I told him, yes, I remember when I saw that big baby coming from the clouds and I saw the world and I saw nations and I saw the white clouds. And he told me, I'm going to give you the interpretation of that vision. And then he told me, when you see all those white clouds covering the the world, those represent your lungs. And I am going to clean your lungs. And right there, I saw the world went to the left, to the right. All, all, the, all, all the clouds started going like this. And I started seeing all these nations. I saw so many nations, the beautiful lights in the, of the world from up there. And the, the nations that you see are places where I am going to take you. Because I want you to share this experience with many. Yes. Yeah. So true, Israel. So true. I mean, it's there is a there is a kind of a Kairos moment in in time in all of history where these stories are being shared. Mm-hmm. And let's let's continue. So you are at that point, your heart had had stopped, mm-hmm. and you were in heaven with with I Jesus. Was in, I was in, in space with with the Lord, and then right then when he when when he told me never again say that my judges are not real because if I allow 10 plaques to hit Egypt to let my people go of Israel, who are you to say that my judgments are not real? I allow this for a reason. And when he told me that he allowed this for a reason, he said, I allow it because I am tired of the sin of the world, Edgar, but more, more tired of what's happening. And I'm, I'm like, I remember he said, I am tired of the sin of, 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 the, of my people, of the church. And I, I got so confused right there. So right there, he, he, I woke up and I was so weak in the hospital. And then they knock, up, they knock on the door. And when they came in, the nurse and the doctor, I don't remember, he was a doctor. And then he said, Edgar, are you okay? I was like, yes, I'm okay. Will you breathe? Yes, I'm talking. Of course I can breathe. Are you feel, do you feel woozy? Do you, do you have headache? Do you have chest pain? And I said, why are you asking me these questions? And then he said, because your heart stopped. I said, what? No, I'm here. And then right there, they checked me. And they noticed that my batteries from the, from the heart, from the, from that they modern, my, my heart was completely um, um, burned out, a brand new battery. And he said, that's me. I just put this new battery. I said, I don't know. So they changed it and they put new batteries and they started monitoring my heart. Then right there, right there, Randy, when um, my second experiment, 
that, that's and the next day. Um, I remember that I was I was I was in my bed. The bed started shaking, and when the bed started shaking, it started going like up and up and up. And then I woke up and it stopped. So I went back to sleep. The bed started shaking and it started flowing up and up and up. And it took a while going up and going up and going up. And then it stopped. When it stopped, I I I I I, I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I was in this beautiful, beautiful place. I saw these beautiful people dressed in these beautiful garments. I saw um, um rivers. I saw gold in the ground. I saw trees. And I was like, wait a minute. I know where I, I had a feeling. I know where I am. I am in heaven. I started screaming and screaming like a little boy. I'm in heaven. I'm in my resting place. And then one of the people that were there, like seven of them were there. A lady came to me dressed in this beautiful garment and she approached me and she had this beautiful crown. She was gorgeous. Her eyes and I had a feeling, I mean, if she was an angel. People were asking me if she was an angel or the mother of Jesus. Oh, I don't know. because She never gave me her name. And I saw the brightness from the trees and the light coming out from the tree. And I wanted to follow that. that I, wanted, I wanted to go to those trees. And then she told me, it's calling your attention, those trees. I said, yes, it's so beautiful. Come with me. You're going to see there, and there you are going to rest. And when I started walking and walking, I, I something was pulling me back. And when something was pulling me back, I looked back, and I saw a tunnel. And when I saw the tunnel, there were thousands of prayer coming out from the tunnel. And then I, when I heard the, those prayers, I could see the names of the prayer. I they, I could see my name, Israel Shalom, Edgar, or they call me Bobby because of my last name is Babylonia. They call me Bobby, and right there, um, um, Randy, when I saw that, when 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 I saw that, the voices started thinning and thinning and thinning, and then I only heard the voices of my daughter and and my wife, and I also heard the voice of one of my best friends. Her name is Daisy, and I re and I remember when I heard those voices. Now they want me to go back. They want me to go back. And then she told me, God gave you an option here in your resting place. You could stay or you could leave. That's incredible. And you had this experience with Jesus and this mysterious appearance of what, what we um, might assume as, as the angel. I would dare and say. you returned to tell the story. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to part now, and uh, with, with these words, uh, th thank you to Israel, thank you to you for watching, and the great news is, if you are in Yeshua, the Messiah, then uh, your future is in heaven. Until next time, take care, and God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K. Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.